Okay, so we're going to crack out the plasma cutter and burn these bits off and open those holes out that I made a complete Horlix of. I love this tool, but it's a little bit big. I'm trying to find a smaller one that's as powerful. It's not easy without spending thousands. But I tried to sell this one a while ago and no one was interested. I don't know whether it's because it's three phase. But uh, hardly got a bid for it, so I withdrew it. Never mind. It's just because of the shortage of space. Right, let's see if we can just knock a bit of that slag off. This is 10 mil, and it's about at its limit at 10 mil. I think um, I have cut 15 mil with it, but it's messy. You know, it's like I think it's probably 16 mil severance cut and 12 mil clean cut is supposed to be, but uh, I could probably do with putting some new tips in it. It hasn't had a new one for a while. That usually helps. Burn the cables. I should have just moved the cables rather than keep moving the bits of hot metal. But then that's me all over. Do it the hard way. Want a little bit more out of there. Another eighth of an inch or so. I don't want to do all this, put it all away, and then find that the chain's still catching, so I'd rather take a little bit more out than not enough. While I've got it set up. I might just as well whip this bit off of the, oh, forgot the return, or earth, or whatever they call it these days. Um, yeah, it saves me disassembling it all and putting it up in the saw. I might just as well whip it off here. off. You can see the difference in uh, temperature from the start of this video. I started the video in my vest t-shirt because it was baking hot. Now I've got a hoodie and a lumberjack shirt on. Padded shirt over the top of that. Because it's blooming freezing today. And we're head supposed to be heading towards summer. Never mind. Right, let's clean that up. I'm just going to mark where I put, want to put the holes for mounting it. Just, I haven't bothered to measure it, it's just eyeballed again. You know, this is where I want to put it, and I'm going to make them about there. Simple as that. I don't think there's any reason why I can't do it that way. Of course, I set up a lovely video shot of this over at the drill. Got it all positioned, thought I'll move it here, move it there while I'm doing it. And I forgot to switch the blooming camera on. So you completely miss the drilling of the holes. We go straight into the milling of the slots. So this is the bit that I cut off. I'm using that uh, as the bottom mounting part, the part that's going to actually mount to the bottom of the, the underside of the plate. 
that the motor is going to mount to. So literally just cutting a couple of slots, about an inch long, nothing much. I don't need an awful lot of adjustment because I don't think the chain is going to stretch that much. But uh, if I don't have adjustment you can bet your bottom dollar I would never get it right. It would be too loose or too tight. So we're just going to have a couple of slots. I bought this collet chuck for this little mill some time ago and I'm glad I did, it's been a real asset just again for silly little jobs like this see how easy it, it makes them just saves all that drilling and hacksawing and filing Should do it. See if we can put them together. A couple of eight mil socket headed bolts. Do you know I was looking for these bolts the other day. I did some maintenance on my belt grinder, the little one that I made. I put a new bit of um, what's it that carbon stuff on the face plate and the bolts wouldn't undo so I almost stripped them getting them off I thought I'll put a couple of new ones in put a bit of copper slip on could I find them couldn't find them anywhere so I ended up using ordinary bolts and then I found them today I'm just gonna run a little bit of weld around them those nuts just so that it makes life easier for adjusting I could have just tapped the holes but I don't think there was enough meat really only quarter of an inch so it's just as easy to just weld a couple of nuts on alright start putting it back together put the uh, wiper in first the spring don't forget that. Drop that back on its bolts, studs. Quickly whiz them up. those up I'm not going to do them up too tight because I will probably have to take it all apart again before it's finished but I don't want it rocking about while I get the alignments right of the chain so I think what I'm going to have to do, or to make it easier, is have it completely upside down. I don't think I'm going to be able to actually work this out from here. It's going to be too difficult to eyeball everything and hold it all and put a tack of weld on it. That's given me the adjustment. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this. I really do think it's going to be easier like that. So let's clamp that on the bench. These were another bargain. I think I bought uh, 11 of these clamps. There was 4 8 inch, 4 6 inch, 3 4 inch for a tenner. They're all like virtually brand new bloke bought them for a job, did one job with them and then didn't want them so stuck them on good old ebay and no one bids <laughs> I've got them for a tenner got to keep your eyes open but you can find these little gems about right so I've set that just up off the bottom 
so we've got a little bit of adjustment each way more down than up but uh, you know a little bit either way now I'm just trying to figure out how I'm gonna center this up I'm just gonna try and work out where the center of the pulley is on the gearbox and just put a mark see if I can work it out from underneath I think it's about 110 from the edge so let's just put a mark there it's just give me a reference point something to, to aim at it's not going to be you know 100% if it does it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit one way or the other but I want to be somewhere near the middle so that's my point centrally now I've just got to figure out how to get it lined up the other way uh, see if this file will just fit through there that might just go it's a little bit tight but it's actually bent just eyeballing it and it's yeah got a big bend in that so that's no good I can't get an awful lot down there because there's not an awful lot of room in that gap so I'm going to use this nice little bit of flat bit of, uh, I think it's about 5mm flat it's nice and straight I'm just going to try and clamp it on there so that's level and then I'm going to try and sort of clamp it or something to the bottom sprocket that was in the way catching the clamp so I'll just move that alright let's see if that's got it looks sort of ish let's give her a tack see what happens see what that looks like. I'm not going to put too much in the way of tacks on because if it's wrong it's easy to bust off. It's, it's got it enough that I can set the chain up and try it. Let's just take the split link off. You can see it, this looks a bit frantic but I have speeded this little bit up a touch all of this bit just so it's not quite so boring right that's about right but is it going to work out with the links no it's not and it's very loose so I've got to back it off a link it's still very low, so but I'm hoping I've got enough adjustment. So let's just check it. Let's slacken her off and right, that's right down now. See if that helps. I go back onto the next or the next uh, tooth. I don't think that's going to work either. That's too far the other way, so just go up. Oh, I'm so glad I put those slots in now. Because we've got a. I don't know if you've used chain a lot, but you need to find a, a flat bit. I don't know if that, you won't understand that, that, that a link. Well, yeah, the flat, the joiner link's got to go on, on two flats, and that's it. Anyway, I think I've, I've sussed it. So, I'll just cut the chain off. You can see there, the, the two flats, they're the same. So we put the split link in. Now, if you're doing this on a motorbike, or even a push bike, um, there's something stopping that going on. What's the matter with it? There's a little bit of 
weld in there, I think. Right. Yeah, so if you're doing this on a motorbike, that piece would go one way. If it's the chamber's going that way, you'd put it on that way around. The chamber's going the other way, you'd put it on the other way around. As this chain's going both ways, it makes no odds whatsoever. The reason you do that is because if it catches anything on its direction it's going, it's not going to force it off and you lose your chain. Oh bugger, can't get this on. It's always forcing it on rather than off. So the way I've got it on there now, if it was to go anti-clockwise that, that, that way it would be perfect, but going the other way, if it catches something it will knock it off. Simples, eh? Something I learnt when I was about 10 on my push bike. Right, it seems to be running okay. So I'm just going to adjust it because that is a little bit tight, I think. The chains and sprockets never seem to run true. I'm going to weld along there and around the back and then put some braces in just to make it solid because it's got a little bit of a wobble in it there. So I'm just going to dismantle it. I don't want to be welding on it with the chain and the all the gubbins in the way. Get them out of the way. Drop the chain down through the hole. That's out of the way. We can drop a bit of weld on there. If I can find my helmet. There we go. I am going to run down both sides, back and front, even though I'm going to put braces on. But uh, I want to make sure it's not going to go too far. Because over the years, with it going round and round, although I probably won't use it that much, with it going round and round and round, and it's slight rock in it, it's like bending a bit of iron backwards and forwards a million times. Sooner or later, it'll snap. So I want to get plenty of weld on there and the braces. So let's cut them. Again another bit of the same bar that uh, I attached the motor with. I think it's 60 by 6. Might be 65 by 6, something like that. Just take the corner off where it's going to go over the weld. Tidy up the burrs. And then weld them on. Again, it's all eyeballed. You know, this ain't an engineering shop. This is a blacksmith shop. Near enough's good enough. I know there'll probably be engineers screaming there, but hey ho. I'm having to use bigger wire at the moment. I normally use 0.8, but I bought a job lot of cheap wire 
Someone was advertising it. A tenner a reel. I couldn't resist. I bought four or five boxes, I think. One mil and a couple of boxes of 8.8. .8. It all does the same job, but I do prefer the point eight. All right, see if we can stick it back together. See if it runs. You see now why I welded those nuts on the back. It just makes life so much easier. Fiddle arsing about trying to hold a, all that up and a nut on the back. At least this way I can just hold it with one hand and do it up with the other. Not have to worry. Let's tweak it up a bit. So that's not going to go, is it? Because I'm catching the motor. Go the other side, Gary. That's it. Clever boy. There you go. It's a bit tight. I think I'm going to slacken that off a bit. <clears throat> Definitely feels a little bit on the tight side. pulling any bearings or anything like that so I'd rather have it a little bit slack that's better yeah much better I can't see it flying off the sprockets at the speed I'm going to be using it so there we go. Let's try her out. Plug her in. And as I said, I don't know if it's the beginning of this video or end of the last, contact. This is evolving, this project, and I think I'm not even going to use that enclosure at all. There we go. Look at that. It works. Yeah, I think I'm going to mount the transformer and the speed controller literally on the, the underside of it, like where you can see now, that empty space, and then uh, make some sort of legs that I can tilt it from 90 to 0 or you know, 45, whatever, horizontal to vertical. Look at that. One's a treat. Hmm. Pleased with that. I think I might have got my calculations almost right. Let's try it in the other way. Reverse. Yeah, it goes pretty fast. And then you can slow it right down to... Let's have a look sort of nothing virtually. I'll do a little test. I won't bore you with doing it but I'll do a little test see how the speeds are. I'll let you know in a minute. So overall I'm really pleased with it. So I've just got to get something to mount it on as I'm not going to use that enclosure. And we're nearly there. Right the slowest was half a rev a minute. Fastest six and a half revs a minute. So I think I must have got my calculations about right. I can't remember how I did them, but they don't seem far out. So I've just come back from a little trip to the scrapyard and I came back with this great lump. It was a little bit more than I wanted, but he said he'd get me an offcut. 
as you can see there, although it's upside down, 245 by 146, basically 10 by 6, bit of RSJ, I beam, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to use this to make the sides. So let's set about marking it out. I want it about 16 inches long so that it's got a decent footprint. As you can see, this is fairly self explanatory what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to cut all that out, put a hole in there, and then make uh, similar for the top to go onto the actual plate. So let's cut it out. Speed this up a bit. So basically, all I'm doing is literally cutting along those lines. I'm going to cut it out roughly um, and then I'd like to try and cut it out with the bandsaw. There you go. That's your first one. But I'm not sure if I'll get it in if the throat's big enough. We'll have a look in a minute and we'll see. But let's mark the other one out and cut that out. So this is the second one. Don't forget, I always forget the earth lead on the plasma cutter. Great tool, the old plasma cutter. Hardly ever use the gas these days for cutting. Tend to just use it for lighting the fire. There's a right wiggly line. But there you go, that's the second one. Tidy up a bit. Right, so now I've got it up in the vise. I'm going to try and do this a bit more accurately. I'm having to do it with the plasma because the throat on the bandsaw is just not big enough. I can't get it under. Can't get the six inch web under. So, never mind. If I go steady with this, we should have. A reasonable job and then a bit of grinding but nothing too drastic that we can't cope with there you go that's the first one so I'm gonna to have to grind them off because I couldn't get any closer round off them that's it done so let's cut the other one which I've done now I'm just gonna grind them Nice little grinder here I found in a, like a charity type shop for I think about a fiver. It's a, a real powerful, it's about a thousand or more watts. So I just changed the disc, the disc had had it, so we've got a new one on now. It's one of those you can really lean on and it doesn't stop. And it was brand new, it's still in the box and everything. Someone had obviously been bought it, didn't want it. My gain. So there you go, I've done both sides of that. Just got to radius the uh, top end now. So we'll get on Big Bertha for that. Makes light work of it. Really ought to clear the shop up a bit more. So much stuff in here at the moment. You may have seen at the beginning I've got a load of jugs I've just made waiting for dispatch. Because it's a bank holiday weekend I 
Probably won't get a shot of them till Tuesday. Just check the line. That side is the one that's got the line on it. There you go. So let's just do the other one. Done. So, next job. I've centre dotted where I want the holes and I've marked out on that bit of scrap the piece that I'm going to use to go on to the, the actual plate that the gearbox and that's mounted on. There's the centre dots. And I shall cut this one out and then use that one as a pattern to cut the second one out. It's going to be plenty heavy enough. It's only six mil, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be um, holding great big lumps of iron up on this to weld. It's going to be basically lightweight stuff, so I don't think I really need it particularly heavy. All right, so I'm going to just quickly draw around that one and cut the next one out. just going to cut out nicely out of this little bit of scrap and I shall oh, I forgot it again the earth um, once this is cut out I'll probably tidy the end of this bit of RSJ up and I might even use it for something I'm not sure what but it's still a reasonably nice height perhaps make a doming block or something or other and put on the top of it if I can find a gas bottle or something that I can use for the dome dishing block, not doming block. Right, it's just going to tack these together so that I can grind them up and hopefully they'll be the same. trying to follow the line a bit. I made these or did the drawing for these on the, with the same tin can that I used on the, the other part. Right. Now we've got to put the holes in. I marked them about the same dimension as on the the other uprights, which is only about an inch and a half in, is a four inch plate. So, in theory, if you're doing it accurately or doing it to you know machining or engineering standards, it should be two inches in, but it won't be tall enough. I need to gain an inch, so I've dropped it down a bit to inch and a half. I've done the same on the other end, so we, that's that. The, the two half inches are gaining me the inch. It might look a little bit odd, but hey ho. It's only going to be me using it. What's the old saying? A blind man would be pleased to see it. Right, I'm putting a 12mm hole through these because I've got some 12mm. Um, Allen headed countersunk set screws. I think that's the term for them that I'm going to use for these. There's one. So I'm going to countersink that now. If I can find my big countersink tool. I've got a big Morse taper one somewhere. Let's go and look for it. I've found it. Unfortunately, I think it's a bit blunt. It could really do with sharpening up a bit. It's chattering away, but it's just about doing the job. All my other ones are a little bit too small. 
So it has to be this one. Alright, so that's done both sides. That's just about right, that's enough. Now let's drill the same 12mm in the uprights. Alright, that's got them done. So, let's start trying to figure out what I'm going to do next because I want to have some way of um, stopping it in position so I'll have the plate welded on there and then it can go 90 or up to you know straight up horizontal or vertical that's what I was trying to say so what I'm going to do is put a hole in here a slot try and slot it so there'll be a hole in the other part because what I've bought, um, which I find really useful, these are great little bits of kit. These machine handles, these look like they've been kicking around in someone's garage for a long while. And I bought long ones because they were actually cheaper than the short ones because then I thought I can cut them off to whatever size I like. And these are those things that you, you've got like a ratchet and you can move the handle around to wherever you need it so it's out the way. Um, great little things. I've used them on the belt sander, which you can't actually see now, but <laughs> one's there, and one's around the other side um, to hold the arm in and out. So that's what I want to use. So somehow I've got to put this slot in the big upright. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole in here. Not quite sure whether I want it at the top or the side or even offset not sure don't think it actually makes a great deal of difference wherever I have it I guess it would probably be better if I had it near the bottom in the meatier part of the, the uh, thing rather than up the top and then there's lots of filing so let's go and figure it out So what I've done, I've just bolted these two back together because I should have put this hole in whilst they were still joined. Of course I forgot about it, didn't I? So I'll just put a bolt through the middle there. I'm just putting a 10mm tapping size because I'm going to tap that out to the size of that machine handle. So let's just Fold it up and have a look to see what we're going to be faced with. So I'm just going to use a pencil for now just to get an idea of what sort of an arc is going to be, and where it's going to be and what it's going to look like. That'll do it. Yeah, there you go, that's the sort of thing I was expecting. Obviously it's not going to need to be quite that big. Um, it's only going to need to be literally 90 degrees. So, I wonder if I'm going to... From there to there, yeah, I wonder if I'm taking on a bit of a silly idea here. Yeah, see if it just goes to 90, that'd be fine, ample. No, I think I should be able to do it. It's only quarter, isn't it? If I drill lots of holes, I've got a my die grinder, a bit of filing. Might not look pretty, but I think it'd be just the job. So let's try it out on the second one. But this time I'm going to try and get the centre line so I know where I've got to put my centre dots to drill. So what I'm going to do this time is pretty much the same. Get it 
sculpt it up. But what I'm going to do this time, instead of putting the pencil through there, I'm going to stick the 10mm tapping size in that I've just used. And then hopefully the centre of that, if I move that and hold it in tight, it's going to scribe a nice little arc where I've got to put my centre dots to drill. Have a little look. Yep, look at that pucker. So, what I've got to do next is drill them and make the slot. But unfortunately, that's going to have to wait till next time because I've run out of time again. Catch me on the next one.